Uh, I too share the Prime Minister's uh, sympathy with all those affected by Hurricane Irma in whichever part of the uh, Caribbean they have suffered. I hope that the Prime Minister will be prepared to look carefully at the speed of our response to Hurricane Irma and if future uh, demands are made in the near future, in the next few days or weeks from any country affected by it, that Britain will respond as generously as we possibly can to help people at what must be the most catastrophic time of their lives. Uh, Mr Speaker, the situation facing disabled people in Britain is described by the United Nations Committee on Rights of Persons with Disabilities as a human catastrophe. Does the Prime Minister think that it was right that while her government funded tax giveaways to the richest, disabled people have been hit hardest by the cuts her government has made? Well, first of all, in response to the references that the Right Honourable Gentleman made to the UK response to Hurricane Irma, I can assure him that actually the UK response was a speedy one. We already had RFA Mounts Bay pre-positioned, as I have said, and it was able to go in immediately to Anguilla, first of all, to uh, make necessary repairs, such as ensuring that the hospital there could continue to operate, and it was able to do that straight away. But of course we recognise that the devastation that has taken place means that there will be a significant significant uh, need for reconstruction. Uh, in those British overseas territories. Of course, other uh, members of the Car uh, countries that are members of the Caribbean have been hit and other countries in the region as well. But we will be obviously looking, uh, there will be a point at which it's right to start the reconstruction uh, work. And of course, we will be working with our overseas territories to ensure that we are able to see those uh, countries actually brought to life once again and people able to get, have a, a, an economy and a good life there. In relation to the questions about disabled people, I have to say to the right honourable gentleman, that over the time that we have been in government, we have been seeing more disabled people get into the workplace. We have focused, crucially, we have focused the support we're giving to disabled people on those who are most in need, and we have increased the amount of uh, support that is being given overall to disabled people. So again, the picture that he presents is not a fair one. Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, the United Nations Committee says, and I quote, that government policies have caused grave and systematic violations in the rights of disabled people. We've seen punitive assessments and sanctions, cuts to disability benefits and the bedroom tax that has hit disabled people, 4.2 million of whom now live in poverty. At the weekend, Mr Speaker, we were told that the public sector pay cap had been dropped. On Monday, the Prime Minister's spokesperson said it would continue as planned. Yesterday, they said the pay cap was over, but later found out that uh, we found out that police and prison officers still face a real terms pay cut. So, could the Prime Minister tell us what the position is at midday today? <laughs> I say, first of all, I would just remind the right honourable gentlemen, as I've just said, we spend over £50 billion a year on benefits to support disabled people and people from health conditions. And as a share of GDP, our public spending on disability and incapacity is the second highest in the G7. So I suggest he thinks again in relation to this. And in relation to the question of public sector pay, I said to him, I think it was only last week when uh, questions were raised about this, that there were two further public sector pay review bodies to report and the government had to respond to those pay review bodies. Those were for prison officers and for police officers. They reported, they made their recommendations and as we have accepted the recommendations of the independent pay review bodies across the public sector, we accepted them for those two groups of workers. But we also we also recognise, as I've said to him before, that we need to ensure that we balance out protecting jobs in the public sector, being fair to public sector workers uh, and being fair to taxpayers who pay for it, many of whom are public sector workers. There is, a need, there is a need for greater flexibility as we look at these uh, uh, issues of public sector pay in the future. We will be working on this in the lead up to the budget and the remits for the pay review bodies for 2018-19 uh, will be published in due course. Jeremy Corbyn. Does the Prime Minister understand that inflation is now 2.9%? Anything less 
means that dedicated public servants are worse off again, and they have been made worse off every year for the past seven years. Yesterday, the Prison Officers Association were not impressed either with the 1.7 per cent offer, saying it is a pay cut, it is not acceptable. We discovered, Mr Speaker, that they have been offered, the police as well, a slightly smaller real terms cut in their incomes, came the news that this will be funded by more service cuts. Can the Prime Minister guarantee no more police or prison officers will be lost as a result of the decisions she has made this week? What the, uh, uh, what the right honourable gentleman uh, fails to remind people is that these pay review bodies who have reported and recommended these sums of pay are independent bodies. They make a recommendation to the government, and the government has taken, has taken, those, uh, has taken those recommendations. But he's also failed to mention one or two other things. He's failed to mention the automatic pay increases over and above the 1% that many public sector workers get. Indeed, a calculation suggests that a new police officer in 2010, thanks to uh, progression pay and annual uh, basic salary increases and the increase in the personal allowance that is a tax cut for people, are actually over, uh, have actually seen an increase in their pay of over £9,000 since 2010, a real terms increase of 32 per cent. Jeremy Corbyn! Mr Speaker, there are, there are 20,000... There are far too much noise in the chamber. We'll get through all the questions, however long it takes, but it's just a bit tedious if it's disrupted by excessive noise. Mr Jeremy Corbyn. Thank you, Mr Speaker. There are 20,000 fewer police officers and 7,000 fewer prison officers than there were in 2010. 43 per cent of police stations have closed in the last two years alone. Police budgets cut by £300 million. But the Chancellor is absolutely on the money on this one, literally. Because last week at the 1922 committee meeting, he told Conservative MPs... <laughs> he told Conservative MPs, look at us, no mortgage, everybody with a pension, never had more money in the current account. A Conservative Prime Minister, a Conservative Prime Minister once told Britain you've never had it so good. Now Tory MPs tell each other we've never had it so good. Can the Prime Minister tell us what's happened in the last seven years to the average person's bank account? Can I say to the right honourable gentleman? And um, I'm very interested, you know, he's talking about the ordinary people, he's talking about uh, what the situation that they face. This is his fourth question. He has not yet mentioned the employment figures today. <laughs> Unemployment at lowest level since the mid 1970s. And employment, people in work, people taking home a wage, a salary to support their families at record levels, the highest level since records began. The only problem is more people in work are in poverty than ever before, more are in insecure work, more on tax credits and housing benefit to make ends meet. Consumer debt rising by 10% as wages are falling. Household savings lower than at any time for the past 50 years. That is the Conservative legacy. Mr Speaker, a young woman called Aisha wrote to me last week and she says and she says I have recently graduated from university with a hefty amount of debt on my head. <laughs> However, and she goes on, Mr. Speaker, I cannot understand why Conservative MPs don't want to listen to this question. I really can't. However, I will persist. However, she goes on, I am scared about the futures of other young people. People have always dreamed of being a nurse, no longer want to train to become one. Her government, 
in, with the support of the Lib Dems, treble tuition fees. Will the Prime Minister take the opportunity this afternoon to vote against another Tory hike in student fees? to the right honourable gentleman, once again there are a few things about people's circumstances that he has failed to mention. Things that the government has done, things that the government has done, taking 30 million, giving a tax cut to 30 million people. That means, that means for a basic rate taxpayer, £1,000 more in their pockets. That's what, that's what sound management of the economy by a Conservative government delivers for people. But the right honourable gentleman talks. The right honourable gentleman talks about delivering for students. Let's talk about delivery. Let's talk about promises that are made. He promised. He promised. Oh, 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 no. far too much noise on both sides of the chamber. I say in all candour and friendliness to the Honourable Member for Brent Central, who's in a very animated state. I don't know what you had for breakfast, but I think I ought to steer clear of it. The Prime Minister. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The Right Honourable Gentleman promised workers that he'd protect their rights, and on Monday he let them down. He promised students, he promised students that he would deal with their debt, and he's let them down. support Trident and he's let them down and he promised voters he'd deliver on Brexit and he's let them down. What people know is that it's only the Conservatives that deliver a better Britain. Mr Speaker, the Institute of Fiscal Studies reports that English graduates have the highest student debts anywhere in the world. Yeah. Poorest students now graduating with an average debt of £57,000. Who is responsible but her party and the Liberal Democrats on the, of that situation? Mr Speaker, we are in the middle of an economic slowdown. The OBR says there is a growing risk of recession under her watch. Growth is slowing, productivity worsening, wages falling, jobs becoming more insecure, personal debt increasing, saving levels falling and homelessness rising all over the country. And it's forecast that by the end of this parliament, five million children in this country, the fifth richest country in the world, will be living in poverty. Isn't it true that not only is our economy at breaking point, but for many people, it's already broken as they face up to the poverty imposed by this government. Can I just say to the Right Honourable Gentleman, yet again, he has failed to mention on student fees. Who was it who introduced tuition fees? What has happened? Let's look at what has happened in our economy. What do we see? Record levels of direct investment in the, in the British economy. Firms investing in this country because they believe in the future of this country. The, what we also see from the employment figures today, more people in work than ever before. We see more women in work. We see more 16 to 24 year olds in work or in full time education than we've seen before. That's what you get with a strong economy. And what do we know and what do the people know? That the Labour Party with its high debt, its high taxes, its fewer jobs, Labour Party would only destroy our economy as they did last time. We had to sort it out. The only people who pay the price for the Labour Party are ordinary working families. 